Hey everybody, thanks for joining us today on Honest Diecast Collectors and Customizers. Uh, today we're going to go through a list of tools and materials to get started on customizing. Uh, these are things that I would recommend getting when you're first getting into diecast customizing. These are the things that I've found most useful. So first we'll go through the tools uh, that I recommend. Then we'll take a brief pause and I'll grab the materials uh, such as paints, markers, uh, things of that nature. Um, the things that I think are best to get started. Now I think it's I think it's really important to emphasize you definitely don't want to overload yourself at first. You definitely want to start simple. Uh, when I first got into it, I started off with wheel swaps, um, base swaps, just really simple stuff. Uh, it's good to get just your feet wet and see if it's really for you first of all before making such a large investment because it can get spendy, especially when you start getting into airbrushes and, and paint booths and things of that nature. So I would recommend starting off easy. So with that in mind, today's video is going to be uh, again about the tools and materials just to get started. It's a very simple list. I think it's very helpful. Uh, and again, these are things that I find very useful. So we'll get started. Uh, the first thing I would recommend are a set of close cutters or dikes, whatever you prefer. Uh, and then a more beefier set to cut uh, different things such as, uh, you know, thicker plastic, metal. Um, this comes in really handy for cutting sheets of styrene, uh, cutting rods, uh, windows. Uh, a lot of my customs, I would prefer to cut the side windows out just to give it that open window look. And I find these work the best. Um, if you use too big of a too big of a cutter on the windows, it kind of stresses them and just doesn't make the windows look very pretty. So I definitely recommend those. Most people, when they get into uh, cracking the cars open and everything and they go to put them back together, uh, there's really two ways to do it. Uh, you can either glue or epoxy the vehicle back together, which I still do, uh, or you can drill and tap. Um, so definitely want a T-handle. This is a T-handle with a two millimeter tap. I use two millimeter screws. Or actually three millimeter screws, my apologies. Uh, and then of course you're going to want the drill bits to crack them open. So this one is the pilot bit, which is 564. My eyes are going cross-eyed. And then this one is going to be to break the head. This is a 532 seconds. And then this is a 330 seconds. This is what I used to drill into the pilot hole uh, to prep to prepare for the tap so that's those I recommend those and if you haven't checked it out already check out the the very first video I uploaded was on how to uh, drill hot wheels to open them up um, it's kind of a ticky tack video meant to just send it to a friend so it's not professional it's not edited or anything of that nature so uh, definitely give that video a check if you need some guidance on that. Speaking of drill bits, Dremel, they make a mini drill bit set. These are really good for uh, if you, you know, once you get comfortable enough, you start getting into mirrors, doing mirrors, doing roll cages. Uh, I believe I use the, I use the 364 bit the most. And I use that for the styrene rods, which I use for roll cages. Uh, a lot of people use uh, paper clips and things of that nature, but I prefer to use the styrene rod. Uh, just simply way easier to work with. It's bendable, it holds its shape. Um, so yeah, that's what I recommend for that. On the next line of Dremel, definitely a cutoff wheel. This is definitely one of the more beefier ones that I use, but it's this is the one that I use the most. Um, and then a buffer, it's like a buff wheel. This is if you 
are sanding the car down and polishing the car if you want to use Spectre Flame or if you just want to make a chrome car, you definitely want to get those. Uh, very important are these as well, the steel brushes. Uh, you can pick a pack of these up at Walmart for three or four bucks uh, and you get four of them. Um, but you definitely need these anytime you strip a car. Uh, the next step after you're stripping the car and removing the old paint is the steel brush it just to clean off, clean off the surface. Um, this is a 57 Chevy that I'm working on and that's basically what it looks like after the steel brush. Uh, this is a really rough casting too. You can see a lot of the a lot of the indents and everything. Th those were not caused by the steel brush. Those were there. So, but again, that's that's a very old casting. It's kind of funny when you get into customizing, you, you, you crack open these old cars and you just see how far along how wheels has come casting quality wise. It's pretty funny. Uh, let's see here. Next on the Dremel section. Definitely gonna want one of these, uh, especially if you're lowering cars. Uh, you're gonna need to grind the fenders. This is the one that I use the most. <clears throat> I do have another one that I use, but this is the primary one and it works the best. This one seems to shave the, shave the most metal off. And on the line of Dremel, uh, Dremel bits, Usually you can go to Home Depot or Lowe's and buy one of these kits. This one's quite a bit old, so it's a bit beat up, but uh, you got all kinds of things like flapper wheels, um, rubbing compound, steel brushes, uh, different attachments. <clears throat> very nice, very handy. <clears throat> and then of course, the Dremel itself. Again, this one's really old. I've had this thing for years. Um, I would highly recommend using this chuck. Um, it's way better than using the one where you have to use the two wrenches to undo the chuck. Um, this is just, it's so much easier. Just saves a lot of time. All you do is just twist. I mean, just like a regular drill. It's awesome. But uh, very fast, very easy. Alrighty, next on the list, uh, you're definitely gonna want some pliers. Uh, these are the finer pliers. I mainly use these and uh, I would definitely recommend some smaller tweezers as well. Some very fine, small tweezers to hold small parts, um, like styrene rod when you're gluing it together, um, axles, things of that nature. Um, but these are definitely two things that you'll want. You will definitely want a beefier set of pliers than this if you're crimping axles, crimping axle ends, um, which we'll definitely do a future video on. Storage bins, storage trays. These are actually old Pringle, uh, travel Pringle, cups that I use for all my wheels so they come in very handy you can use them for paints too if you wanted to I also have a couple of these these little snap uh, snap lock uh, bins which are really helpful probably the most this is probably the most valuable tool I have seriously uh, this is called helping hands uh, I purchased this at Hobby Lobby uh, so if you have Hobby, Hobby Lobby in your area, uh, you can pick one of these up for about 10 bucks. A lot of people pick up multiples of them and they'll extend the, the, uh, the alligator clips out uh, to hold stuff while they're painting. Um, but very, 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 very useful tool. Um, this is the interior of a 55 Beller, Chevy Beller gasser that I'm working on right now. It's not, not even close to being done, but... Um, as you can see, it comes in super handy, especially when you're working with smaller parts. Uh, definitely these little small applicators for paint and glue come in, uh, come in very handy. A good little small ruler will definitely come in handy for uh, measuring out styrene, especially that's what I mostly use this for. I also use it for a straight edge uh, to cut straight. A uh, good set of shears. These are actually surgical shears that I use. And again, mainly I use these to cut styrene sheets and decals as well. Some paint brushes definitely come in handy. Uh, ones these big I mainly use to just sweep up my cutting mat and everything when I'm all done. Um, but very, very, very handy. I don't have any finer ones, but if you prefer to paint your paint on with uh, brushes, Definitely invest in some smaller, some smaller brushes. 
Next thing I would recommend on the recommend list, wooden skewers. They're cheap, they're easy, easy to find. Um, I use these to apply super glue into fine spots and also for painting, like painting tampos, uh, doing all kinds of paint work. Uh, they are very, very, very fine. So I prefer to use a mix of these and uh, as well as the steel picks. That'll be next right here. This, I would recommend investing in a, uh, in a set of a pick set. This is actually a clay molding from a clay molding kit that I got, but these are the two that I use the most. I uh, mainly use these to apply, help me apply decals. And then these I'll use to, um, use to pick old paint out of like crevices and body lines. Um, also to paint tampos in very small areas. So very, very useful. I definitely recommend a set of those. Definitely need an X-Acto knife. Again, you can use this for styrene and decals. And along with the helping hands, this is probably the next most valuable tool, I would say, is a jeweler saw. Now, these are especially helpful once you start getting into body chopping um, and hinging stuff like doors and hoods and trunks. You definitely want one of these. It's going to be way more consistent. The cuts are going to be cleaner than you would get with a Dremel or a cutoff wheel. So definitely invest into these and definitely invest in lots of blades because you're going to be breaking a lot of these because they are very thin. Alrighty, I think that does it just for the uh, startup tools. Um, I will go ahead and clear the desk off and get the materials, the recommended materials set up. One more thing I forgot to mention was uh, a cutting mat. I actually have two. This one is kind of like my, it's kind of like my not care too much about it anymore just because it's so jacked up. I got lots of cut marks and paint and stuff on it. So I primarily use it for my surface uh, when I paint, um, kind of along with the tray too. The tray I mainly use for when I'm sanding bodies and polishing bodies just so I don't get, um, I prefer to wet sand. So I don't prefer not to get a huge mess all over the table. So I'll put it in this, in this, uh, in this tray here. And then you can see the bigger one underneath all the cars and stuff. But I definitely recommend those. This one I got at Hobby Lobby, I wanna say, for 10 bucks and I think this one I got at Joanne's Fabric for I want to say 30 bucks it's pretty big pretty big mat uh, but definitely comes in handy and it's better than ruining your table alrighty so I got the tray and the tools out of the way uh, now I got all of our paints our glues pins things of that nature uh, that I recommend uh, getting before you get into customizing just so you have everything um, First things first. We'll start here. This is a large variety of paint pens This is actually the paint that I use the most Are these paint pens and yeah, they're big markers um, So they would obviously be hard to apply to a car directly, but what I'll do is I'll dab it into these blisters into these old blisters and apply the paint uh, one thing you'll never need to ever buy paint trays if you just reuse your old card blisters. So depending on how many cards you plan on cracking open, boom. Alrighty, so paint pens, definitely a wide, array, um, a wide assortment, whatever range of colors that you think you might need, uh, you can go from there. Obviously spray paint as well, um, unless you have access to an airbrush. Um, I'm actually still working with spray paint. so. Um, it's not a bad way to go, but obviously airbrush is the way to go, but it is a spendy investment. So, uh, so paint pans and spray paints of your choice, all your colors that you want. Uh, Sharpies, there's a couple paint pens in there, but uh, mainly your Sharpies, like your basic colors, like, you know, red for stop lights. Um, I think my orange one is in a different one, but I use uh, orange or amber for turn signals. Um, 
there's two different ways to do um, like light tampos and I'll discuss that in another video but um, I find those very 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 helpful and actually some of these sharpies as well like this one I actually I actually made a boo-boo on this CUDA and uh, I had to fill it in let me see if I can find it on the camera I think it's back here back here so I went and grabbed a couple of green sharpies and this one actually matched perfect and this and this is basically a spectra flame car so um, it actually worked worked great so you can find those at michael's hobby lobby um, anywhere that sells art pens uh definitely super glue of course you're gonna need that these are the two that i mainly use the extreme power i got at hobby lobby the super well that you can get at lowe's or home depot um, the super weld is a gel type and this one is a liquid type so just depending on on what I'm gluing I'll have a preference of one over the other so we got those and then I always find it helpful to get some JB quick or JB weld um, sometimes I'll get into some some custom axle projects where I really need that axle solid and I'll I'll resort to using that stuff. Uh, we'll get into that into another video, but I would recommend picking up uh, some JB Quick or some JB Weld. Uh, the Elmer's uh, washable clear glue. This is if you want to put your vehicles back into their cards and blisters, and you want to glue the blisters. We'll do another. We'll do a video showing you how to do that as well. Um, but definitely need need some of that if you want to do that. Dry erase markers, this is for removing tampos. We'll do a video uh, covering that as well. This is definitely one of my most prized possessions, my chrome pin. Uh, you can get these at Hobby Lobby. They are relatively expensive, they're about 12 bucks. Um, but nothing beats these as far as getting stuff chrome that you want chrome, um, as far as plastics and whatnot. <clears throat> these also, highly recommend these are uh, Micron calligraphy pens, um, and I use two different types. Just disregard this one for a second, I'll explain. Um, but I use the Micron 005 and the Micron 05. The 005 is a 0 0.020 millimeter pen, and the 05 is a 0.45. So this one's thicker, a little bit thicker. This one's thinner, but these are great for drawing in your body lines and uh, coloring things black, like, you know, maybe small small lines and grills, uh, vents, things of that nature. These things are absolutely a must uh, for good detailing. <clears throat> and then when they dry out, like this one did, you can actually use these to apply paint. So if you want to crack open you know, your can of paint and let, let's say I just need a really small dab of this stuff somewhere, you know, I'll use my calligraphy pen if it's in a row. This is an old one, that's why I marked it with the orange tape to let me know that that's my, kind of my junker pen, my my paint applicator pen. Um, of course, paints, wide variety of uh, testers paints, you know, works great. Um, you know, some people use uh, Tamaya, some people use testers. It's all good stuff in my opinion. Uh, you'll definitely want some paint thinner to clean off all your brushes. And you want nail polish remover or acetone. It's the same thing, but you have to make sure that you get the 100% um, the 100 acetone nail polish remover. This is, this is basically the same thing as this. Um, but you're gonna want acetone to clean stuff off. Um, and also if, um, as mentioned earlier, if you want to put your cars back in the card and blister, um, you'll definitely need this to uh, separate the blister off the card. And we will do a video on how to do that. <clears throat> and then you want some masking tape. This stuff I don't use too much. Uh, this is mainly to maybe tape around the body, uh, but this is the stuff that I use the most. And this is the, the 3M. Uh, fine tape. I know that there's some thinner stuff and I've been looking for it just for like body uh, you know body lines and and racing stripes and things of that nature but this is all I have right now but this stuff works great absolutely no complaints so we'll dig down here actually go up here 
styrene. Some of you are probably wondering what styrene is because I keep saying it, but these are styrene plastic sheets. Uh, these are great for building anything you can think of from engines uh, to seats to custom bases. These are the two main sizes I use. This is 0.020, this is 0.040. Um, so these are the two that I use. And again, Hobby Lobby has an assortment pack where you get, I believe it's an 010, an 020, and an 040 assortment. And it's made by this same company, Evergreen Scale Models. Uh, the next thing on the list is the 040, or 040 blah, 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 styrene rods. Uh, this is the stuff that I use to build roll cages, like so. So that's actually those, those styrene rods in 040 right there. This one's not done yet, but I'll give you an idea. But it's very it's very bendable. It sticks to um, you know, of course, if you use a decent glue, uh, it sticks to itself quite well. So it's much better to. It's much easier to use than paper clips or metal rods, in my opinion. So we got that. Uh, if you want to make your own axles, there's a couple ways to go. This is, let's see if I can focus in on that. This is 030 Music Wire. Um, stuff's very strong, like it doesn't bend very easily. But the downside of it is that it's it's pretty hard to, to crimp. So you're gonna need some some pretty beefy pliers to crimp the ends on, or crimp, crimp the ends for the wheels. And then this is the stuff that I primarily use. I don't really use the music wire anymore, but I use the 032 brass rod. And again, I use these for axles. Um, I also use this for lowering my vehicles, and I'll show you how, how I do that as well. Um, but this is definitely the stuff to get, in my opinion. And then brass tubing. This one, the thicker one, uh, is actually big enough to actually put the 032 rod into. Um, and again, I'll use that for custom axle projects. And then this thinner stuff, um, I'll use for various amounts of things like wheelie bars, chutes, uh, things of that nature. But I would definitely recommend both of those. And I definitely recommend some Q-tips if you make a mess with your glue or your paint, you need to clean it up quickly. Overall, I think that will get you started pretty quick. Um, if you have any questions, concerns, um, anything of that nature, just leave, leave your comments down below. Um, I will be checking every day, so if you have a question, just ask. Um, I'll be more than happy to help. Um, other than that, uh, head over to Facebook and join our Facebook group. Um, I'll leave a link in the description. There's tons of customizers, tons of help. Um, everybody's very friendly, uh, happy to help. So hopefully this video helps get you started and get you motivated to customizing, and I hope this helped. Thank you very much.